puts on a bunch of new growth and you know that's the end of it. Uh, we see black spot. I would not be at all surprised if you didn't search some of the plants that come to us and they have a little black spot on them. They're grown by a nursery that still does many things chemically and when you're in a chemical program you, you just don't have the natural controls. Once that plants in your landscape it's much much less likely that you will ever see black spot on it. The black spot's not a death message and it's not anything to be totally panicked about, but it's something you can do a lot to prevent. Yes, sir. If you uh, have black spot and you want to trim the leaves off, mm -hmm. does it matter if they go on the ground or you throw them away? Or I throw them in the compost pile. Okay. There are things in the compost pile that will totally destroy the fungus. Okay. The other fungus that shows up periodically, and once more, it's much more of a nuisance than anything serious, and that is powdery mildew. If we have a lot of rainy, wet weather, you're going to get some mildew on the leaves of your roses and also on the buds. You'll see the, you know, little white fuzzy stuff develop and the blooms may not be quite as pretty as usual. That's a sign of wet weather, that's a sign of a lot of humidity. Those are the conditions that the powdery mildew really likes. Exactly the same thing you did for your black spot will stop it. Garlic will stop it, neem <coughs> will stop it, cornmeal soaked in water, that corn water will stop it. Mildew is a nuisance, but again, it's not a death threat to your plants. And if we have a really cloudy, wet period, everybody's going to get some mildew. It's just sort of a fact of life uh, with growing a lot of plants, including roses. But those are the two diseases that are of consequence above ground. There is a fungus that gets in the ground called downy mildew, as opposed to powdery mildew. And downy mildew will kill plants but I don't think I've ever seen it in a good organic situation. It's one of the things that people that are using chemical fertilizers and peat moss see a lot more of this on their plants than anybody who's growing things organically. You just don't ever see downy mildew, you know, in good, well-grown roses. Can I ask one question? Yes. You mentioned the whole, the whole, whole ground, ground right. versus the regular cornmeal. Which of these makes the best to spray? I know there's a difference in here. Okay. Whole ground cornmeal is ground up corn, and it has all the goodness of corn in it. When you go to the grocery store and you buy enriched cornmeal, the name would make you think it was better. But the way they make enriched cornmeal is they take the corn, kernel of corn and they polish the outside edge of the corn off where all the good stuff is, and they put that in animal feed. And all you're getting is basically the starch out of the center of the kernel of corn. They polished away 14 essential nutrients. They put 10 of them back and they call it enriched. Now I think that's what George Bush called fuzzy math. I still come out four nutrients short. So you don't want enriched cornmeal. Whole ground cornmeal is a much, much better thing to use. Yes sir. When I was in Greenfields the other day, I saw degerminated whole ground cornmeal. What does that mean? I suspect they've done something to take the little embryo, the germ tissue out, why on earth that would be done. I have no idea unless it's an allergen to some people, but okay. I'll ask Tracy Wolf next time I see her. The extra cost. Oh, so they make it more expensive? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds good, but I'm not, I don't know if there would be any, any benefit to it. One is very ex much more expensive. I guess that's the whole brand. I used to be buying 50 pound bags of this stuff to supposedly kill off things. <coughs> My timing never that was, worked. That was corn gluten meal. Corn gluten. When they take corn syrup out of corn, high fructose corn syrup, mm -hmm. also a very bad thing for people and animals, but when they squeeze and affect all the corn syrup out of the corn, what is left behind is the protein content of the corn, which is what they call corn gluten meal, which is four times as expensive as corn meal. It serves as a natural pre-emergent in dry years. It's a waste of time and money this year. And the Chinese put it in a lot of animal feeds, which has driven the price through the roof. This ethanol idiocy has tripled the price of corn, which makes all corn products much more expensive. And it makes everything that eats corn more expensive. You wonder why the price of your beef has gone up? Ethanol, because it suddenly meant that the corn farmer was able to sell his corn for a lot more money, but more, more politics, which we'll stay away from. <laughs> yes, sir. Besides any good nursery, where would we find the whole ground cornmeal? Cheapest place is a feed store. I mean, a place that manufactures animal meat. <clears throat> Be aware, though, that that's the place where you're probably going to get corn, which may have aflatoxin in it. Keep it away from the animals. 
Uh, I read a report. I get the most interesting, diverse bunch of information from wildlife biologists, and I hope any of you gentlemen that hunt don't still put corn out for the deer. Worst thing you put out for deer, put out good protein pellets uh, if you want to feed the deer. But they're finding that all the corn, they have to they test for aflatoxin before they use it in human food or in animal foods. And if it has too much aflatoxin in it, they sell it as deer corn. It doesn't seem to bother the deer. But what they're finding is that the aflatoxin in the corn has virtually killed off all the quail in a lot of areas and a number of other birds, including some of the turkeys. So getting it from the feed store, you know, fine to use for a lot of different things, but don't feed animals with it. What, what about the bag? Probably not. What about the bag that's labeled horticultural? Right? Horticultural cornmeal is whole ground cornmeal. I doubt that it's been aflatoxin tested. It is probably pretty safe, but I just, I'd just be cautious with it. Again, I wouldn't want the animals going and eating a whole bunch of it. Do cats like it? No. So I'd be safe if I put it out. I would think so. Okay, those are the fungal problems that may bother roses. Uh, there are a couple of insects which may be of concern. There are some that will look like they're doing damage that really aren't. Probably the thing that panics people most, but yet you should worry about the least, there is a bee that they call a leaf cutter bee or a leaf eating bee. And periodically they'll, you'll see on your rose leaves, you look like a perfect circle has been cut out of the leaf. That's a little bee that does this. They seem to be around for about three or four weeks in the summer. That's the only time we see them. They don't really do any severe damage, and they're almost impossible to kill. So if you start seeing little round holes eating out of your rose leaves, don't worry about it. Two, three weeks from now, that guy will be gone, and he's not going to do enough damage to really worry about it. Aphids may show up on plants that are growing very quickly. And if you overfeed your roses, I was just telling you, you can't burn your roses with a good organic food. But if you put too much fertilizer on them, you can stimulate very soft, very rapid growth. And that's the kind of growth that aphids are going to really sometimes jump on. If you get aphids, I recommend you take your garden hose and wash them off or else release some ladybugs. Their larvae will happily eat your aphids for you. And they're not going to ever be life-threatening to your plants. They may keep a few buds from opening as pretty as they might. But aphids, again, are just a nuisance. Another name for aphids are plant lice. But uh, they're really, I don't think they're enough to really worry about. And again, a strong blast of water with a hose is usually all it does, all you need to do to take care of them. Uh, don't worry about the individual aphids coming back. The aphid sits there with its little sucking mouth parts in, you know, into the meat of the rose. When you hit it with a blast of water, the aphid gets blown this way, but the jaws still remain in the plant. It's not going to stay alive very long. So washing them off with water it only gets rid of them, but it does kill them as well. Kids think that's really cool. You can probably tell them what's going on. Your kids will love to take the hose out and wash the aphids off for you just for the visual it creates. To me, the most serious as far as not hurting the plant but ruining the look of roses is a little insect called a thrips insect that gets inside of the bud before the bud opens. It's called a thrips, T-H-R-I-P-S. That's both singular and plural. When you talk to some people who don't know, they, they say, oh, we have a lot of thrip on the roses. No, you don't. You have a lot of thrips on the roses. It sounds stupid, but anyway, that's, that's grammatically correct if anybody gives a darn. But um, the, the thrips insect, the symptoms of thrips insect is Either the bud doesn't open, or if it opens, the petals are all burned and crispy looking on the edges. Mm -hmm. If you take that bud and break it open, and you have good eyes, you'll see little kind of beigeish, orangish creatures running around. You probably put 10 or 15 of them on the head of a pen. They are very small. <clears throat> but that's the thrips insect, and it is inside the bud, sucking the juice out of the bud, which will cause it to either open deformed or open with burned edges to the petals. No threat to the life of the rose. It just means you get an ugly flower. So what do you do to prevent or control thrips? In the early spring and the winter months, the thrips are in the soil in a larval state. And when they're in the soil, the beneficial nematodes will do a very good 